weird dreams man but this this was so vivid maybe it's a warning man you know I don't know maybe God is trying to tell you uh, something oh, come on man what do you mean I, I'm, I, I'm just saying that maybe it's a sign uh -huh. just don't rule it out man that's uh, all I'm saying I'll keep that open mind you're always talking about I'm sensing your sarcasm I'm just trying to help. And maybe if you... Hold on. Blue here. Yeah. I gotta go. Time is near. The plans by our master will be carried out, which is why it is imperative that we find the sun anymore. There have been no signs that the sun has emerged, Felix. Shouldn't we just move forward? No. This is not something you'd simply leave up to chance. The son of Enoch is as real as the male himself, and the only thing that could get in the way of our master's plans. He must be found. And how do you propose that we do that? With no signs, we wouldn't even know where to begin. Not exactly. The information that we have on the sons of the past should prove useful in helping to locate him. This is some bullshit. That is easier said than done. With no bloodline to trace him, and... Not easy, but not impossible. We've already begun to the remote protocol. What exactly is that? It's a mind control Our project. Our mind control project. You see, chips are placed on the side of the head, behind the ear. They're absorbed through the skin, so there's no incision, and they go undetected. The chips help us to access the minds of our subject. But how does that help us find them? The chips work on signals, or brain waves. The son of Enoch, his mind can't be accessed because his brain function is that of an angel or a demon. We can't control his mind, but we'll continue the protocol and he'll show up sooner or later. So I'm thinking about going back to school. I really just want my mom off my back. Huh. She's always talking about how I'm not taking life seriously enough. And honestly, I'm getting kind of tired of just, you know, being a janitor. Yeah, well, I can see why you say it like that, man. How else would I say it? We're not janitors. We're the custodial engineers in the medical profession. It's <laughs> such a test. <laughs> yeah, so I was trying to catch snogs the other day, right? Yo, Arthur. Arthur. What? Uh, are you okay, man? It looked like you spaced out for a second. Uh, yeah, my bad. <sighs> yo, yo cold chill, here. chill with that, bro. You need to relax. You know, so I was saying, like, yo, that Snorlax was taking great ball after great ball. Yeah, you know? shit, I think we're a little late, dude. I don't think so. I mean, this is the doctor's office. What can they say? I need to buy a new watch. We continue to prepare for your return, Master. Distribution is underway, and our influence continues to grow. Soon we'll have everything we need. Do not underestimate the power of the son of Enoch. Master. I just don't think that he will be of any consequence to us. By the time he emerges, if he emerges, 
we will have gotten too powerful for him too. Your ignorance provokes my anger. Please forgive me, Master. I... I'm sorry. I just... I don't understand. What you do not understand will become your undoing. I will not risk my plans because you cannot fathom the true power of our enemy. If because of him we are brought into the light, everything we have worked for shall fall apart. We will find him, Master. With Sleeper Protocol underway, we will find him. And we will kill him. Pod B is right down the hallway to the right. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Take your coat. Oh, sure. Honey, Officer Blue is here. Come in. Let's start from the beginning. Can you tell me everything that you remember about March 3rd? It's okay, honey. Go ahead. Um, it was just like any other day. I got up, went to work. Uh, from work, then I went to the grocery store. Went back home, put it all away. And then I noticed that one of the bags was missing. So I went back to the grocery store, picked up the bag, went back to my car, and the last thing I remember was turning it on. So you started your car, and then you blacked out? Uh, no. Okay, I don't follow. Officer, I started my car. I blinked, and then it was dark out. I looked down at my bag, and my groceries had spoiled. I went home, and my wife tells me I've been gone for eight days. Eight days, and it didn't even feel like eight minutes. It still felt like I was in the same moment. I didn't even have to go to the bathroom. Mr. Barlow. I know. Call me crazy. I know you're thinking it anyway. But I'm telling you the truth. I don't think you're crazy. I think that you believe that what you're saying is true. But you don't believe me. Your labs came back clean. You're virtually unharmed. 
nothing was taken away from you except maybe a week of your life. I, I, I just don't, I don't have enough to go on, uh, except. Except what, officer? Except this sounds almost identical to at least four other cases that I've worked over the last few months. But again, I don't have anything solid. Claims of people disappearing with no evidence of abduction or anything. Victims reappearing with no recollection of the time that they've been gone. So again, I believe that you believe that what you're saying is true. And I'm starting to think that this isn't a coincidence, but without any evidence of like wrongdoing or any suspects even, there's just not a whole lot I can do. I mean, for all we know, these people are leaving and coming back with their own free will. Officer, I would never leave for a week without any explanation and then just to return to my family, okay? I don't know if you have a wife, but she would kill me. <laughs> he knows me well. Look, Mr. Barlow, I'll keep my eyes open and I'll do what I can. In the meantime, if anything comes to you, if you remember anything that you haven't already told me, just give me a call, all right? Thank you. Thank you, officer. Hey, MT, what's up? I looked deeper into those missing person cases and still wasn't able to come up with much. I did question a few of the employees at the grocery store, and they remember seeing Barlow that day. And one of the cart collectors mentioned that he thought he'd seen someone who was helping a person into the backseat of a car that matched the description of Mr. Barlow last week. And help did he get a look at the other person? No. He says he sees that type of thing all the time. Someone taking their parent or grandparent shopping, so he pretty much didn't think anything else about it. Something just isn't right about that. That's that doesn't even, that sounds crazy. That's five cases. That's five cases. They're almost all the same. We still have nothing. Well, thanks, MT. I'll talk to you later. Okay, no problem. Bye bye. Chief Garcia here. It's blue. I'm still looking into those missing person cases and nothing is adding up. I still don't have any leads. Um, we did have an employee from the uh, grocery store in the Barlow case. They said that they may have seen someone get into a vehicle, but they weren't able to make out any faces. Yeah, I appreciate the work that you're doing, the hard work. Yes, sir. But I told you to leave those alone. You keep running into a dead end with those cases. Yes, sir. The city has more important cases that have to be solved real now. Okay. Yeah, put me through the volant. Hello? Felix. We may have a problem. So yeah, man, so I talked to Chief and he's all, you know, Blue, there's other cases that need to be solved and we need you to be doing something else and I want you to, you know, it just, it kind of aggravated me a little bit, man. But there's nothing I can do because I don't really have nothing. I mean, what if it was like some weird case? Okay. Yeah, you look like you're somewhere else right now, man. What's going on? No, it's, uh, I'm all good. It's just been a crazy day. There? Uh, oh, yeah, um, let me get on another trim cocktail. Okay. Get a cheeseburger. I'm gonna take the, uh, the Cosabella special. Yeah. Right. Can we get another round, please? Thank you. Thank you. This guy talking about a crazy day. <laughs> So goes the life of the janitor. <laughs> You're a freaking asshole, you know that? Oh, come on, man. Lighten up. Maybe I'm not in the mood to kid around. Chill out, man. Seriously, 890, it's gonna be like that? Come on. You know, it's, it's been a long day. I'm 
I'm gonna head out. Come on, man. We, we oh, okay. All right, leaving. All right. Arthur. 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 Arthur, man, hold on. Arthur. Arthur. Arthur, man, hold on. What, man? What is wrong with you? Victor was just playing. I ain't in the mood to be playing around. It's not even that serious. No. It's not important to you. You're a perfect policeman. No one got shit to say about you. Everyone has to talk about what I have to do. Everyone has shit to say about what I'm doing. Newsflash, I'm the only one who has to live my life. And I ain't complaining about it. But I can't be you, Adam. No, I don't have a career. I ain't this stand-up guy of the community. I'm not talking about God all the time on all his blessings and everything everyone wants to hear about. But I'm me. And I'm fine with that until I find something I want to do. I'm sorry, man. You know, we do joke around a lot and we probably take it too far this time, so you're right. As long as you're happy, that's all that should matter. I do feel the need to push you, though, because you have so much untapped potential. I just want to see you do good, you know what I'm saying? But that doesn't make it okay for me or anybody else to come at you like that, so I should have had your back. Yeah, that's, that's my bad, man. It's just been a long day, man. Uh, just gonna, yeah, just, just head home. I need to chill and, you know, just relax, all right? Wait, man. Yo, it's getting dark out. I can drive you home. Man, if you don't get out of here with all that chivalry, <laughs> this ain't a date. I'll catch you up later, all right? All right, man. It's not a date. Shark of Enoch. You cannot hide. I am everyone. I am everywhere. You shall not escape. I can taste your fear. I will make you suffer. You will cry for mercy.